Okay, um, let's have another go then. Um, paper two, question five, apologies for the earlier attempt. Right, um, a function f is given by this expression here. Um, and question A says find the exact values of each of the zeros of f. So the zeros are also the roots or the x-intercepts. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay? Now, I would recommend you plot this on your GDC to see where, there are, where they are. And you should see when you plot it that you end up with three of them, hence the three marks. Okay? Now, you could just use G-solve and scroll along from G-solve roots and scroll along and get all three. And that will be fine, except it won't give you the exact values. How do we get the exact values? Well, we know that fx has to be zero. When fx is zero, either 2x plus 2 is zero, or 5 minus x squared is zero. When you multiply two numbers together to get zero, one of them must be zero. If they're both non-zero, the answer won't be zero. It might be close to zero, but it won't be zero. So the condition to get them equal to zero is that one of these has to be zero. 2x plus 2 equals zero. Well, that gives you one answer. That's quite straightforward. In the other case, 5 minus x squared equals zero. Um, you end up with x squared equals 5, and that gives you your other two solutions. The question says find the exact value. These, this x squared equals 5 is not a nice whole number. If you give it in decimal form, you haven't written down the exact value. From your GCSE work on thirds, um, you should remember hopefully that thirds, if they're not nice um, perfect square numbers, give you um, non-recurring decimals, irrational numbers. Um, so writing it in decimal form, however many digits you write, will not be the exact value. So uh, you need to write that in third form. If you got the three answers correct, but you didn't give the exact values, I suspect they would give you two marks for having identified the correct points, but not giving it in the correct form, okay? Question B, uh, expand the expression, multiply the brackets. Um, there's a little diagram here that shows you how to do that. There's, we've talked about foil first, outside, inside, last. This diagram here works well as well. There's two X plus two, that's the left-hand bracket. 5 minus x squared is the right-hand bracket. You might remember doing this with numbers for long multiplication in earlier years. 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times 2 is 10. 2x times negative x squared, negative 2x cubed. 2 times negative x squared, negative 2x squared. So there's your table, and you can group those things together, and that gives you that expression. And then part 2, f prime x means differentiate. Okay? So... That's a relatively straightforward question. There's no tricks there. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's setting you up for part C. Use your answer to B2 to um, find the values of X for which F is increasing. Here's our graph. We've got a, it's a cubic graph. We know it's a cubic graph because we've got a negative 2X cubed here. So we know that the graph is going to look like this. Cubic graphs look like this. They're this way around because it's negative. So that's the shape of the cubic graph. You will know that from your GDC. We want to know where it's increasing. Well, it's decreasing here, gets to a minimum point, then it starts increasing, gets to a maximum point, and then it starts decreasing. So the interval where it's increasing is between the minimum point and the maximum point. So you need to find those coordinates, x min and x max, and write it as an inequality like that. Notice that it is a strict inequality. X can't be equal to X min because when X, when we're at X min, we've got zero gradient. The graph isn't increasing, it's flat, it's stationary, it's a zero gradient. And similarly here, it's not actually the minimum and maximum points, it's everywhere between them, but not including them. So um, there's three marks for that. Um, I don't know exactly what the three marks are before, but I expect you would lose one if you put the line in there and made them greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So they've got to be strict inequalities there. Right, um, question D, draw the graph. Okay, uh, graphs can either be drawn or sketched. When they're drawn, they need to be accurate and you plot points. When they're sketched, they need to be general, you get the overall shape and you get the key points um, with you know, things like maximum minimum points, points where they cut the axes and so on. 
um, and it should be a single smooth curve whatever avoid the the uh, particularly those of you doing art this whole sketch thing of uh, lots of little pencil strokes short pencil strokes that will lose you a mark guaranteed a single smooth curve much like I did there don't worry if it wobbles a bit like it does down here it's not a nice perfect curve don't worry if it, it doesn't quite go through the point you wanted exactly um, that's fine as long as it is as long as it goes through the key points pretty much closely and it's a single smooth curve that's fine this is worth four marks it's an easy four marks as long as you pay attention to detail get your axes correct okay you need to have your axes exactly as it stated you need to have your domain and range exactly as they state and you need to use your scale exactly as it states you will lose marks if you don't do that plotting the points use the table mode on your GDC okay I've said down here use table mode if you've already entered this equation of f of x in graph mode it should appear in table mode as well you can change the setup on table mode so that you have the start point negative three the end point three and you can change the step to be 0 0.5 or 1 whatever you want you can change the step to suit um, the, however many accurate however accurate you want the, the graph to be if you're pushed for time step one negative three negative two negative one zero one two and three you'll get those seven points if you've got a bit more time to do it a bit more accurately you might want to put the step as 0 0.5 and you'll get a few more points in there okay um so if you don't know how to use table mode go and learn um don't think i don't know how to do it i'll find another way of doing it prepare yourself for the exam if you learn how to go away and look at it learn how to do it um and then when you if you get a question like this in the exam you'll be much better prepared to do it um as i say this is all about doing the things that you don't currently know how to do to prepare you for the exam if anybody wants to submit that work if anyone wants to draw that and submit it let me know you should be able to get graph paper off i think i posted uh, i put a post on here a little while ago about um the uh, with some graph paper attached rather so you can print a sheet off there if you don't have any at home as long as you've got access to a printer uh, if you don't i'm afraid you'll probably have to go to a stationery shop and buy some but if you want to do that and submit the work let me know but do remind me of the question number when you do that final part the graph of the function gx equals this thing five to the power x horrible graph to play around with algebraically and it intersects the graph of f find the points of intersection okay two marks and a write down question and it says the coordinates it means you've only got the answer marks there's no method marks here at all use your gdc use gsolve your gsolve will only find the points of intersection if the points of intersection are on the visible screen so you might need to zoom out you might need to change your axis settings although i'm guessing that these axis settings will be enough i'm hoping they would have done it so that those axis settings will be enough use gsolve put your x and y coordinates down one mark for the X, one mark for the Y. Make sure you give them to at least three significant figures. Again, usual rules, write down the full answer and then round to 3SF. Okay, does anyone have any questions about that?